Hello and welcome to another podcast of 24-7 Realty. Today our topic is women in real estate and I have some powerful women here at the table. So let's have a conversation. What is it like to be a woman in real estate just in our career as a mom, as a wife, as a friend, as a single person, however it is. So actually let's start with introducing our lovely podcast women here. We have Tina. Hi, Tina. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tina Ramos, and I am very excited to be part of the real estate industry. And I found that the reason why I'm so excited is because this is a new journey for me. And it's always been part of my life thinking about doing real estate, but timing is everything. And being a mother and a wife, I'm a mother of two toddlers. So trying to find a balance between career life, motherhood, and being a wife, as well as being a good friend and family member, it takes a lot. So being able to juggle all of those different types of aspects in life, it can be challenging, but I believe that being in the real estate industry actually allows me the opportunity to be able to fit a career that's conducive to my life and actually enjoy it. And I think that's the best part of being in this industry is that I can actually enjoy this career that can also help families find the homes of their dreams. And coming from a background of fitness, I mean, I actually have just a little summary, I, I have my bachelor's degree in nutritional sciences, and I also have a master's degree in business administration with an emphasis in global management. I also have different industry experiences like the biotech and pharmaceutical industry, as well as outside sales, uh, dental sales, and fitness has always been my passion. I've been a fitness trainer for over 20 years, as well as a fitness instructor. So that's a huge part of my life that I feel is somewhat beneficial in the real estate industry because what it does is for fitness, you, it takes discipline, it takes dedication, it takes strength and perseverance to maintain a healthy and happy lifestyle. And when you try to incorporate that into the home buying industry, it can have a similar concept, meaning that we're trying to help families find a healthier and happier lifestyle. And that is by guiding them and helping them make the right decision. There's a lot of people that are out there that may not know a lot about the industry. And so we, as the real estate professional, will be able to help them in that journey of home buying. And it's not just buying a home, it's buying a lifestyle. It's buying memories that you can make into a home. And I just feel that being in this industry is, is just something that I'm very passionate about. I love it. Well, that was good for today, everybody. Great. Thank you very much. This was a lovely podcast. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank you for that introduction, right. Tina. <laughs> Carla, tell us an introduction a little bit about you. <laughs> okay, so I've been doing real estate since... Uh, the year 2000. I started as a transaction coordinator and a processor. And <clears throat> I had my own transaction coordinator and processing company for, I want to say five years. And then of course, the market crashed. And, you know, everything kind of went down for, uh, you know, went down from there. But uh, then I started doing short sale processing and then loan modifications. I mean, you just shift to whatever it's going on with 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 the market and everything so i just been more involved with like investors for the past i want to say six years and it's it's very rewarding because you get to see all this ugly houses you go in there and you're just like oh my god really like everyone tells me how do you make them so much money with this piece of junk you know what i mean but sometimes it's 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 a challenge for me to be able to find those great deals of homes and negotiating, I mean, it's, 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 it was a struggle, um, I want to say, like, four years ago, where I was very, very focused on 
my business. I mean, I was really, really busy. And to the point where nothing mattered but work. And I have two little ones. And to, I was missing, like, baseball, cheer, and stuff like that. That it was, to me, it was not worth enough. You know, I, I was not happy with myself for doing that. So I decided to take a year off. You know, I literally just stopped. And I started to, I decided to take a year off from taking any listings or anything. I really, literally just stopped, not negotiating nothing. Like, I just, one day my investor was like, are you sure? Are you, like, even like two months into it, hey, are you sure? You know what? I don't want to do it. I'm like, I was stressing out. I was not happy. I was making good money, but it was not making me happy inside because I was at home working, cooking dinner, and not really being there, you know? So deeply inside of me, I was very, very unhappy for the decisions I made. And those are the things that I'm learning, and I wish I would know then to be able to balance life with your family, even with your husband, just because it's it's very important to keep all that all those relationships separated, and I wasn't I was I was not being a good mom or a good wife or even a good friend because guess what everything had to do with work, yeah. and I was working twenty four seven. I mean to the point where I would be at the office in Christmas Eve working. And how long have you been in the business? Well, I've been on the I've been a real estate agent since 2013. 2013. However, I've been I've been um, on you know I work as an assistant for Patty McKelvey, and you know just been I learned a lot of things from her, and then I became you know transaction coordinator and then processor, and then I became a real estate agent, and then that's here I am just doing listings, helping people buy homes, and help people save their homes. I mean, it's tough times right now. So a lot of people are having a hard time to make their mortgage payment and all this stuff. So, you know, it's it's going back to 2009, 2010. It's, it's kind of like a, it's scary, but we're ready to take that shift, you know. Yeah. So I'm ready to help more clients. I'm helping, you know, it's before I didn't know what to do. Now I do. So. Love it. Well, thank you. I love how these ladies are just like, Jumping into it. Usually we have a podcast where I was like, introduce yourselves. And somebody's usually, well, I've been in the business for this long and this is, and that's it. But you guys just went into it. I love it. I love it. Get right to it. And this is how you can tell whether we have some amazing women on here that are willing to share and be open about their lives. And um, so I, lo I love it. And I, two toddlers, two kids, and you hit it right on the head is the balance, right? How do yes. you balance it? So Marla, tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been in the business? Um, yeah. Okay. Hola, my name is Marla Arroyo. I've been in the industry for five years. I started in 2017. Um, I started from scratch. I knew nothing about it, but I was so hungry. Uh, it was like my wake up as a woman back then. Um, we used to have a restaurants, Mexican restaurants. So my Spanish, uh, Spanish is my first language. All my family speak Spanish, but my just my I think my, my two kids they are like totally a hundred percent bilingual. Um, I've been through like many challenges because my Spanish, but I found out that the people love it. They love my accent. Um, and you know what? They just see the, um, las ganas que tú tienes de ayudar. Mm -hmm. That's what they see. Um, Do you guys know what that is? Las ganas? <laughs> like, uh, the, like the willpower. Exactly. And obviously you have to educate yourself. You have to work like a lot. I mean, of course, las ganas counts, but you have to prepare, you have to study, you have to educate yourself. Um, so I'm a mom, I'm a wife. I've been uh, married for 22 years. My oldest is 19, my oldest son. And my daughter is 14, so I have two teens at home. So I cook, I work, 
Um, and as a woman, I think that we, nowadays, we want, we want to do everything. And you know what? We can do everything. We have, I don't know how. I don't know how. Mm -hmm. But we can do everything. I mean, easy. Yeah. Easy. No. Yeah. Yes, we can. <laughs> yes, yes, we can. Yes. 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 You can, yes. You can uh, take a shower, do your hair, uh, <laughs> make yourself pretty, work out. Uh, cook, work, you can do everything. I mean, sometimes it's hard and sometimes you feel like exhausted. But when you realize that that's what, you make, that's what makes you happy and that's what, like, I like it, it's easy. And we care about everything, right? We have to, right. we care about our clients, we care about our kids, we care about our marriage. We have to care about everyone around us. Even when they're sick, we have to care about And then when we get sick, we what do we do? We're still cooking. We're still taking care right. of everybody else. We're still, <laughs> right? Because yeah. most likely right. we're the ones that are doing that. So I love it. Thank you, yeah. Marla. And we are, we are a Huber for our kids. Like yes. go back and forth, back and forth. An this, Uber this driver. And that. Like a yeah, trivia <laughs> driver. Grocery. I mean, what else? You, you know. You all know. <laughs> <laughs> we do it all. But, and um, for these, as I've, Claudia Zaker, I've been in the business for close to 19 years now. I um, have a broker's license. I'm also a mom, um, mother of three, two that are already off on their own, um, living life and no grandkids yet. They're still both single. So if you guys know of anybody, I have a 30-year-old <laughs> and a 26-year-old. Looking for, <laughs> she's beautiful too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Looking, advertising on here, <laughs> and um, and then I have a teenager at home who's ready to go off to college in one year. So we do we balance it all. Um, I work with family, so that's another whole another um, topic is balancing the work and how do you balance it. So how do you guys? Let's jump to that topic and how do you disconnect? From or do you ever disconnect from work? Because we all know that our job is twenty four seven. We work seven days a week. Our clients are not just Monday through Friday, nine to five, as maybe other women and other careers are. We are constantly on our phones. So how do you? How are you able to disconnect and cook and attend to kids and maybe take kids to cheerleading practice and everything else that they're involved with and then still be able to attend to your clients and be at, you know, whenever they need you. So I, I mean, I can actually, yeah. I'm very, I'm very, um, what's it called? What do you call that regimen on this? I don't answer any calls or any, I don't look at my email or anything before I drop off my kids. Because I feel like before, you know, you look at an email and it's a bad news and you just, I mean, instantly you just get stressed. You get tense and, you know, sometimes your kid might drop something and it's not their fault or, you know, I mean, you're just mm -hmm. so sensitive about things that instead of me not worrying about that, I used to like, oh my God, I used to like, you know, get so mad so easily and not, it's not my kid's fault or anything. It's just what's behind it, you know, so... I made it like my thing not to answer any calls or any emails or anything before I drop them off. After I drop them off, I can be on the phone as soon as, you know, drop off line. That's it. And then I, when I get home, it's just seven o'clock. That's it. No more. I mean, you know, there's like the, you know, there's always one or two, but I make it a point of like being there and, you know, just because. I lost a lot of times and one of my friends actually opened my eyes and she said, Carla, you only have 18 summers with your kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then you look at 18 summers and it's like, it's true. You know, and so I was like, oh my God, like I was working every single summer and, you know, people would go here and everything, but it was busy, you know, so. And that's what led you to take a year time yes. off when you realized, oh my goodness, I've lost so much time. Yes doing this and do you find that your clients respect that when you tell them I don't answer my phone between this time or after this time you know what so, like I believe you have to you have to teach them how to like you know to respect that and you and they own that to you you know you have to 
and people actually respect you more about you know they're like called me and they're like hey i'm so sorry you know i know it's past seven o'clock and you know they they understand that and, and yes i mean i never had an issue and i think it was more me be able to tell them no you know i was always wanted to be available for them just because that was superwoman and i can do everything you know and and i just decided not to do that and people would like text me hey what's going on and and i, I admire that of you because in my case i'm always on the phone like no matter what time my kids learn to know when i'm on the phone and they have to stop talking And sometimes that's sad, but that's the way I've been doing this. Um, of course, I dedicate time to them, and 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 the time that I want that I, that I am with them, I am with them. But if the phone rings, I pick it up. I pick it up. No more. And I, and I actually, when when I meet my clients, I always, all the time, I tell them like, you know what? No matter the time. Because sometimes it could be like, like something very little that you cannot go to bed and rest. I'll be on the phone, even if it is 11 p.m., 11.30. Sometimes I've been with uh, VAs, and their schedule are very hard yeah. to them. So I'm always there. Unfortunately, my kids know this, or for, I don't know. But they know and they respect always that I'm on the phone. Or if I'm saying, give me one second, this email is just going to take me 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and I can be with you. So I admire you. I never mm -hmm. have, I, I've never been that brave or that, like, I don't know how to say, like. Say it in Spanish. Nunca, nunca he tenido el valor. Nunca me he atrevido a decirle a mis clientes, and I'm not judging you, like, pero nunca me siento miedo porque sé que a lo mejor me necesitan. I, think, I don't know. I think, um, you know, I was scared too. And you know what? I think what got me more brave was when I decided to stop working. Like, it, and it was really hard because I was at my peak of my time. I was closing like 40 to 50 transactions a year. And you know, and just to stop like that, it was really, really hard. But to me, it was more important, my family mm -hmm. and my health, because I was getting stressed. I mean, yeah. I mean, you can only do it so much. Mm -hmm. And, um, and people, you have to give them expectations. You, I mean, you don't have to say, I can't answer the phone. You say, hey, you know what, just to let you know, I do spend time with my kids. I do have dinner between you know, seven and eight, I'm doing homework with them. So if I don't answer, you know, I'll get back to you first thing tomorrow morning. Right. And it, it, you know what I mean? It's not like that you're not, you don't, you're not telling them you're not a Bella when you're just actually like coaching them mm -hmm. to respect your timing, mm -hmm. you know, Hey, you know, if I don't answer in the morning, it's because I'm dropping off my kids. I think and, sending those parameters yeah. and you're right. It's just like if we, let's say you hire an attorney, mm -hmm. Right, an attorney. We make as much as an attorney, if not more. Um, an attorney, you can't just call them at 7 p.m., at 8 p.m., right? right? You can't call them on the weekends. An attorney is just available between their office hours, and you make an appointment. You can't just call. You have to go through an assistant or go through someone or send an email. So, And because they're being... They're billing you every hour. Exactly. <laughs> That's probably why mm -hmm. <laughs> they want to make sure they time you at the right time. No, and sometimes I wanted to do it, but it's just... I, I was I, I mean, finding yeah, yeah the, the courage and I think it's looking at it differently yeah. and I think for you it had you had to Sorry. get to a certain point to say okay I have to for my health and for the sake of my kids I have to do something differently yeah I mean and when you're not uh, there in present it's you know and, my, and it's, it's funny because I used to go to baseball games and I used to be in my laptop mm -hmm. with like my husband was like what are you doing And, yeah. you know, to me, it was normal, but to other people, it's not normal because we're working hard. Yeah. But then when you look it up from the outside, it looks kind of weird. It's <laughs> tough. It's tough to disconnect. It is very, very it difficult is. to disconnect. I, mean, I, I, I try to do that even at night. But thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, it was like, it's, it's hard. It's, it's, it's a tough. hard decision. And it's like, as a, as a mother, it's like, okay, well, I, and then COVID hit. So I didn't go back for like another two years, <laughs> like another year, you know? So 
I think yeah. Tina, Tina, on the yeah, other tell side, us how do you do it? Like if anyone that's starting in the industry, I, like I hear a lot of great experiences out there and it's, it's great to hear and it's great to know. And I know it takes a lot of hard work and dedication, but for anyone that's starting off, it's really important to find balance yes. and finding balance is being able to manage your time, whether it be time blocking, finding out a schedule that works for you. I mean, everyone's different and everyone has different needs, but in my case, I feel like I want to work on my business around my family, my friends, and my faith because overall, I'm doing this for my family and to also have a better future. I want to be able to contribute to my family so that they can all have a better life. And I also want to do this for the community. I want to be able to give back to the community, to be of service, and to give some type of contribution to help people out there. Because I don't know why, I feel like I just have some type of calling to help people or even to teach. And within time, everyone gains experience and maybe later on down the line, long-term goals, I, I mean, you can dream, right? Maybe one day like I can have my own team that I train and help them so that they can help other people. And I just think that starting off at the beginning in the industry, it's just really important to know what your priorities are and figure that out and make a business plan because this is, this is a, a business and it is your own personal business. So how you develop and how you grow it, you're going to be able to see the success and all the hard work will come into fruition within time. I think if you start off, that's right. Cause if you start off, um, having a system and having organized because in the beginning I think when you first start off you have one client and it's just one client and then as your business grows now you have three four five six if closing 50 transactions is no easy task um, and once you start seeing that that's where I see um, you know many agents saying oh my gosh how do I juggle all of this how do I keep that balance because you're so excited that you have all this business but then it's how do you become disciplined? How do you become organized? So if you can establish those, um, I would say, just natural tendencies to be able to systemize your business and to put things in place, I think it'll help. Um, so let's let's shift gears. Let's talk about what are some of the, have you guys ever experienced being a woman in this career? Like any, I don't know whether it's, discrimination or whether it's maybe creepy things that you've experienced with uh, being out there in the clients or out and I'll start it off so I remember in the beginning I used to market so much and I used to I remember I purchased a big SUV like a big um, I don't know if it was like a Nissan Armana or something big um, and I had it wrapped that was a big thing back then to have your car wrapped and have your face on it and do billboards and things of that sort. So I decided to wrap this vehicle completely with my face on it. It was my face was gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> my phone number out there and I would drive it around or pay someone to drive it around. Um, and I would get a lot of business and calls, but I started getting calls from men that would say, I, I, why aren't you answering my phone? I see you right there driving the vehicle, you know, or, or, <laughs> Hey, you, you're, you're pretty, give me a call. I'd love to chat with you or, or, and I did not, I started to not know what was real client, what, you know, who right. did somebody really want to see a house or who just wanted to see me on my face. So I learned early on to not have my own personal cell phone, um, out there and to be careful <laughs> Where I put my face and <laughs> what happens um, when you're marketing? You still there. have so, a picture of it yeah. or no? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. Let's have a find one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's one out there. <laughs> but things like that, like, have you guys ever experienced where you know, just I don't know what it is. Like, would would men put, putting their face on a car or on a billboard get the same amount of same type of calls, or is it women that get more calls like that? Like, what are those something that you guys have experienced? Well, I can stop. So, yes, I've experienced some <laughs> weird things. So, when I started in this business, I um, made public my social media. So, it was hard to me because 
everyone can see you, everyone can see your phone number, your information, your face, everything. So I just started receiving uh, very weird messages from men, but mm -hmm. also phone calls from women. Yes. And, and I was like, why? My husband is in the industry as well, and he never, he never. Got calls like that? No, just me. Hmm. As a woman, from woman. Wow. And Well, you are beautiful. I'm, I'm curious yeah. what the women <laughs> say. <laughs> and, 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 and messages, uh, private messages from men, right? So, like, two years ago, I... I got so scared f with one call and specifically, mm -hmm. so I just closed my account. I didn't mm -hmm. close them, I just make them private. Mm -hmm. And I work a lot, of, I mean, I've been working a lot on myself to be ready to make them public again, and mm -hmm. I just made them public, so everybody oh. can message me again, <laughs> and nobody's gonna hurt me anymore. <laughs> and also something weird that I've noticed, that um, when you meet with couples, as a woman, um, I don't know about men if they struggle a little bit with this, with jealous men, mm. but as a woman, you have to be very careful to not, because like my personality is just to be like, ah, and some women, they, they don't like that. Right. Especially mm -hmm. in our cultures, in all yeah, of our right. cultures, and where it's so cultures. huggy, exactly. touchy, you want to hug, hug everybody and give them a kiss. I'm a hugger. And right. I was like, I'm sorry, I'm Mexican. Thank you so much. <laughs> and, and, and some women, they don't like that. Yeah. So I've been learning as well, mm. as a part of my job, to mirror... Yes. everyone or if there's a couple like talk more with the wife the wife mm -hmm. yeah you know right happy wife happy right. life right yeah <laughs> you're showing a home right. simple things like you're showing a home right and they usually the husband will go somewhere to look yeah. at the garage or the kitchen and the wife will go see something else so you want you want to follow the woman, yes. you know, not right. follow the husband. Exactly. So it's simple little things that you pick up and say, okay, what's right, what's wrong? And I'm wondering, you know, do men have to deal with this as well? I, I don't know. Maybe we should have a men in real estate next. <laughs> yeah, no. Stay tuned for the next episode of men in real estate. Yeah. <laughs> Respecting boundaries, right? Yeah. You kind of get a feel of who you should talk to a little bit more and maybe who you should stand off a little bit. Just by body language, you can yeah. kind of tell right off the bat like, oh, okay, maybe tone it down or who knows, or you just got, you get a feel of it when you see the oh, people yeah. in person. Yeah, <laughs> and it's something that you have to be like, to me, I never thought about that when I started. Mm -hmm. As a restaurant, we were in the restaurant industry for so many years before, you learn customer service. Right. Like, to treat excellent the client like the client it's your king mm -hmm. and that helped but that helped me in in this industry as well but yes you have to learn <laughs> other things like differently yep as a woman maybe try not putting your cell phone out there either on the public <laughs> page <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know i had to do that <laughs> that was that's scary though that's I, mean, scary. I see you it's like that's i mean you would be like scary. right was I, it following me home yes and i didn't answer yes right yeah. is it are they following you home or what are they oh my goodness um, i actually experienced something a little bit different from you guys it was more because i work more with man like with guys mm -hmm. And they always said, oh, you can uh, do property management. And, you know, that job is, doesn't, sorry, that job doesn't belong to a woman. They would always wow. say that. And I was like, wait, wait a minute, you know, that's so easy. You go there, talk to people. And you know what? After I did it for a while, just because, you know, with investors, it's like, I want to make sure the house is ready to go for listing. And then I go to make sure everything is good. And if it's not, I tell the contractor, hey, this needs to be fixed. And. 
you know, and I even started negotiating prices for my investors. And then after that, they were like, oh, my God. So after they decided that, like, I was not good, then I was actually the one to actually start it, uh, you know, negotiating, like, bids for the projects and stuff just because I communicated better with the people. And, you know, like, people always try to, like, get cheaper prices. And I want cheaper prices, too, and lower prices. However, it's like you want quality work, too, to the point, right? So if that guy is going to take two more weeks, hey, take more two more weeks, but do quality work. But it was it was really, like, for a year. So was, did you feel you had to prove yourself yes. as a woman to be able yeah. to negotiate and deal with tenants and things of that? Yeah, yeah, with just, you know, with the contractors and everything. And I was just like, why? And it was all man, all man, like, going and... And the contractors, they didn't even listen to them anymore after I started doing it. And I was like, okay, I'll prove you wrong, you know. Just, and I started doing it. And, of course, I was getting paid for it. So, and to me, it was, it, was, it's a, it was a learning experience. I always wanted to learn more about construction and, you know, how it is actually getting done, how you take this wall down, how do you move this bathroom to another place. And, you know, th that was always my thing. And, oh, no, that's not, you know, I was just like, okay. But after a year, I started doing it, and I started saving them so much money, and the houses were coming out super nice. It was just like, that was my job, too, you know? So You proved them wrong. Yeah, a bit. Yeah. It's, it's kind of... But you had to deal with that. Yeah, and it's sad. Like, in this time, it, you know, and they look at you. I mean, if, when you're working with a bunch of guys, and you're the only girl. Because you know what? I, I think that they feel... Amenazados? Threatened? Yes, mm -hmm. for the wom for a woman. Because we are multitask, and sometimes we have the ability to do so many things that they can't. In fact, I mean, like, you're, he's an owner. He's a millionaire. Like, I'm just, you know what I mean? I'm your listing agent. You're, you know, I just wanted to learn, and it was one of those things. Oh, no. What's his name? I even forgot the guy who was in charge of it, but it was kind of, Okay. And he was, you know, not very out there, not very good. So I was like, hey, let me do that job. And I, you know, I, like I said, we had to prove. And it's like, okay, sure. You know, always had to prove ourselves so many times. So one more time That's with women, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Never let anyone tell you you can't do something, Exactly, right? yes. <laughs> Tina, and so I know you're pretty new to the industry. So have you had any experiences so far as far as, or maybe your perception of going into real estate or what you've known, anything as far as being a woman? I know eventually I'm, I may see some things coming down the line, but I, being a woman in real estate, I do notice, well, or maybe it's just me, I, I feel like people are very friendly. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe if you're friendly, then you attract friendly people, right? <laughs> but, I mean, I do come across all different types of people. And sometimes I, I do come across people that may not be the happiest person around. And by nature, I'm always smiling. That's just the way that I am. And so whenever I see somebody across the way, I always try to make it a point to say hello, or maybe make a conversation, of course, if it's safe. But I don't know, I just I feel like being in an industry, it's a people industry. So you kind of have to really learn to gauge people's personalities. I mean, even though somebody doesn't smile, that doesn't mean that they won't talk to you. But unless you take the initiative to make the conversation, that's where you can actually start some type of networking experience. And you never know who's having a bad day. That one smile or that one exchange of a compliment can actually change someone's life. And we don't know that. But if you just make the effort to be that person, then you can make the difference in, in so many people's lives. Very well said. You know, one thing that um, I remember looking back um, as, you know, running a company and um, working with other male investors and other businessmen um, that I saw running other companies, um, I remember one time I got a comment from one guy when, I was looking to take over the business from my husband. Um, 
he said to me, and he said it face to face, and I couldn't believe, <laughs> and I hope he's not watching this, <laughs> um, or if he does, if he remembers what he said, but he told me, he says, just like this country is not ready for a female president, this company is not ready for a female leader. Um, we should not have a female leader running the the company that I was um, going to be taking over. So I could not believe that he said, and I, I just couldn't believe that in this day and age, after yeah. <laughs> where our world is and where we're living in, that someone, that there's still people out there and still men out yeah. there that think that way. Um, I experienced it also in the commercial arena. I was getting certified as a commercial to understand commercial and to be able to do commercial Um and the same thing I, I noticed when I was talking to others saying there's not many women in the commercial real estate industry. It's mainly dominated by men. Um, and I also remember getting a comment from, you know, women are too emotional and women can't, um, don't, you know, they get emotional versus being able to negotiate, you know, black and white mm -hmm. and commercials, more black and white business versus on the emotional real estate side. Mm -hmm. So I remember being told, stay, stick to your residential side. Cause that's where, you know, you want to make dreams come true and help. And it's all nice and fluffy and colorful versus commercial is very business. Like, so you can't be here because you're too emotional as a woman. Um, so comments like that, that, you know, that I've experienced both, you know, at a, running a company level to commercial, you know, bigger transactions, things of that sort. So I'm surprised that there's still that out there, mm -hmm. you know, um, and it, it just, it bothers me. And I'm like, wait a minute, you know, and of course I come from a law enforcement background, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm tough and I'm like, I can do anything yes. that a man can do, <laughs> yeah. whether it's shooting and yeah. shotgun, yeah. Right? <laughs> we can all do target, it <laughs> taking down a big guy, you know, yeah. whatever it is, you know, we can do it. So that, but that gave me the drive even more as woman, as a Latina and just woman empowerment to say, no, I can do it. You know, I'm going to prove them wrong. I can Yay. run a company, I can grow a company, I can sell commercial real estate, you know, things of that sort. And I, and I'm, I, I wish there was more support groups around women and women leaders and women um, to, to be able to help each other and just bounce back, you know, that to be able to help what we're struggling with and what, how we can move ahead. And yes, I'm not all I'm not the type of woman that's just women empower. Women are better oh, than men. No, None no, of that. Yeah. You know, we need no. men and men are great and I, they're great. They're, but there's men also that stay at home and that support their women who are in careers. Right. And there's men who are amazing at what they do. Um, and we need men. And I'm and I, I am all pro men. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, we also have a stigma with women and yeah. women in careers and women in leadership. So how do we change that? How do we, you know, I don't know. I, I don't, I guess it's one client at a time, one transaction at a time, but it's, um, I believe we have, we can do anything. We are multitaskers. We run households. We, you know, we, we do everything. So, um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for, I just wanted to vent. I, and I know, and I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. true. It, and to, it, to earn the, the trust of a man and, you know, to me, it's just like with my investors, it's, it's, I mean, it took a while to, I mean, they're not just buying a little house, they're buying multiple houses. So, I mean, to earn that respect and like, oh, okay, this person can handle all this stuff. And I mean, they listen to your advice. It's like, yeah, it's a good buy. Yes, you're going to sell it for this amount of money. I mean, to me, that's, it's amazing feeling, you know, just because, not just because I earn the respect, but they're, I'm, I, I feel like I've been listening. You know, it's like, oh, my, I'm They're listening to me. I'm valued. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's, it, it was hard at first, you know, oh no, this and that. And, you know, like, yeah, here we go again. We have to prove them, you know, it's like, no, yes. this is, you know, a, there's a certain way you do a business and a certain way you process things. And if you do it the right way, you can make a lot of money. And, you know, it's, it's to earn people's trust. It's really, it takes time. Yeah. And I right. think sometimes like when that happens, if, a situation happens where somebody says something to you or something that just doesn't fit well with you, I feel like sometimes it could be a blessing in disguise because it can give you an extra force to make you do what you want to do. Or like people say, oh, you're going to prove that you could do it. 
we don't need to prove anything to anybody, right? As long as we know that we can do it and we are coming from a good place and we are doing the work and being ethical, confidence is key as well sometimes, especially if you're new in the industry, have the confidence and be proud of what you're doing and know that you are the professional because people out there are looking at you and coming to you for professional advice to help them. So if we can provide that and give them, I think that that really is adds value to the community. Right. Yeah. I wanted to ask you one question, follow-up question. Yes. Um, so how did you handle that when um, that person told you this company is not ready for a woman, a woman leader? It took all my just ounce of <laughs> my emotionals <laughs> to be able to just take a deep breath and respond back to him because I wanted to just, you know, come back at. But I said, no, I have to be the better person. I have to be, you know. So I took a deep breath and I said, well, you know, thank you for giving me your opinion. Um, I do feel like I have a lot to offer. And I hope that you will think differently once you see that where I can take the company. That was my response. And I changed the subject and we moved on and I went ahead and went into that position and mm -hmm. I ended my relationship with that person. Um, but it, there, it's out there and you just have yeah. to sometimes do take control a little bit of our emotions, yes. right? Because we, we, we are, we are, we, we want to cry. <laughs> we want to, we are human, <laughs> yes. but it's just saying, well, you know, I respect, you know, your, your opinion. It's your opinion and you're entitled to your opinion, but you know, I do believe I have this quality and I'm going to push ahead. Um, and then you get the strength, right? Mm -hmm. I was thinking when you said that, I thought about diamonds. You know, how do you get a diamond? It's the pressure. No pressure, no diamonds. That's what right. they say. So we are all diamonds in our industry. Yeah. Yes. Marla. Yes. Sparkle. <laughs> I'm a pink one. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else that you guys I mean, have experienced as a woman? And back to the even the balancing, because... Back to the balancing, because that's something I think that we all, um, what are some tips that you can provide, let's say, other women in the getting into the industry or in the industry right now that are looking for balance and time management? What are some tips that you can give? Them? Okay, what I noticed a lot of agents, um, they get stuck. Like, you know, they've been in the business for so long and they get stuck and they're like not selling anything. And I mean, it, it, it's in our industry. Some people get depressed. Right. I mean, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I mean, I talked to so many people and not because they're unhappy at home, but they're happy with themselves because they're not doing what they love to do professionally, you know. And I think this industry needs like more, like you said, support of like people talking to yeah. it, because let's say I have a friend right now who it's, you know, I've been really, really good friends and she's a real estate agent and she is an amazing mother. She's an amazing real estate agent. However, she's, you know, you get to that point of like stuck like we don't know what she doesn't know what to do and stuff and to me I was at that point when I was stuck when I started to come back to real estate it was I was, I was like oh my god am, am I going to be able to do this again you know I mean it was gone I was gone for two years but at the same time it's scary thoughts you know and a lot of agents new agents they get they get that fear of like hey you know I'm not going to be able to do this I'm not going to be able to to close deals um just you know like we need like some support of like the brokerage or anybody else that if you see somebody like that it's just they're not going through a good you know like a good scenario right now because of like they're not selling and for new agents I mean they just need to do the work because a lot of people is like how do you get your properties it's like well I door knock I do call calling and all this stuff but people don't want to do it you know it's I mm -hmm. it is just it's really to the point where you need to do the work. Nobody's going to do it for you. Right, you know, it's right. not a secret. Like people, is, what's your secret? There's no secret. And I, so you're saying being aware of maybe those around you who could be going through a tough yes, time yes. and reaching out to them and just sometimes it's just yeah. being a, just being able to listen, right? Sometimes we just need I mean, to be able to it was show not that easy we care for me and listen. To be able to just drop everything, it was depressing, and to come back and be like, okay, my life changed. But at the same time, it's, you know, it was more, more important my family at that point, but it, it does get depressing at one point. It's just like, okay, you're closing this. 
And I was never, I, I'd never been the person of like, oh, you're number one, you're in the top 1% or anything. Because I think everybody's great. And, and if you're closing one and that makes you happy, yeah. you should be happy within yourself. And I think a lot of the Asians focus on, on being the number one of the 10. Yeah, it's great. But I mean, if that's not making you happy, it's, you know, why are you, yeah. you're right. going for the number Success one. Success looks so, different for everyone. Right? Yes, exactly. Right. And yes. I think it's, you can close 10 deals and be super excited, oh, happy yeah. with life and, mm -hmm. you know, and everything. But other people, they just want to be the number one, which, yeah, I like, I like to win, you know, but at a what cost? Not and worry about what other people think. Exactly, what, exactly. What you're right. supposed to look like, or what you're supposed to fit in, what box? Right. Yeah, it's just whatever. Is. It's everybody's different, you know. And, and go ahead. Oh, and it's just uh, things that you do every day, like the small daily improvements, really lead to long-term lasting results. Mm -hmm. And if you just stay consistent, put in the effort, put in the work, the fruits of your label labor will come within oh. time. And the more people that we talk to and the more people that know about you, then it'll all just come into place. Right. Like you said before, what you what, what you friendly put. or what you're putting out there is what you're going to be attracting. Right. Yeah. Love it. Exactly. Marla, what tips do you, can you provide? Well, it's just the matter of what Carla was saying, like, just do what you have to do. I mean, nada te va a caer del cielo. Just do it. Just make your phone calls. Just go outside. I mean, when I, I started in the two, um, 2017, it was no pandemic or anything. So I was door knocking every single day. So... Just do it. Just go do it. Just there. I was afraid to come today. And I would and I, I never say no to anything. I can figure it out later. But I never say no to anything. That's the way I am. And so I just, think. just do it. Just she do says it. earlier yeah. for those that the translation that nada te va a caer del cielo is nothing's gonna fall from the sky. It's not gonna land on your lap pretty much you have to go out there and do, do it. it yes you have to go out there and get it mm -hmm. love it yeah. get out there and make it happen right and be patient you know yep. it's it this is a industry it, it takes time you know to yep. get your own clients and to earn people's Persever trust Don't which give is up. surround yeah. yourself with powerful women Call us yeah. if you're listening to this. We'll be your support group. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey. Thank yeah, you, guys. Should. This was wonderful. Thank you, guys. Make sure to like us, look us up, follow us on social media. We'll be having a lot more podcasts like this and hopefully have these ladies back. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. 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 Good job.